On today's hunt, we're picking up right where we left off, in the back country of an Alberta wildland provincial park. This is not the new new country that I was after, but it's still a pretty exciting place to be right now. The country is beautiful, with towering peaks in all directions. But the weather is cold and windy, and in the high country, the snow is building. I'm actually gonna hike up towards the mountain. There's an area that looks like a valley that has a lot of nice rolling grass hills. For the better part of a week, I've been chasing white-tailed deer and six-point bull elk with my pals Brady Trottier and Tom Coker. Yesterday, there was a couple deer bedded right down there, so they might be doing the same thing in bedding. Um, and if that's the case, we're gonna get in there, try and put a stalk on them. In the past few days, I've put Tom in front of some bull elk that were just shy of being legal and a few whitetails where things didn't quite go according to plan. Needless to say, we've yet to punch our first tag. We won't see anything moving too, too much here in the next half hour or so. We're gonna get now we're down to our final three days of the hunt and I'm starting to feel the mountains tightening their grip and the pressure of filling a tag is building. It's mid-November in the Alberta Rocky Mountains. I'm out here with my buddies, Brady and Tom. Is that a deer right there? That's a train, but be ready. In search of rutting whitetails and bull elk. It's whitetail breeding season, when the normally reclusive nocturnal bachelors come out of the heavy timber and all caution goes out the window, which increases sightings in the daylight hours and the odds of hunter's success. I'm gonna go and check over here. If we don't see nothing in 10 minutes, we'll come back and kill that deer. It also seems that the cow elk in this particular valley are going through another estrus cycle. Now, typically, they go into estrus in September, but when cows are not bred during the first estrus cycle, they will go into heat again later in the fall in hopes of finding a worthy suitor who can fill her desires and turn her into a respectable mother. We spent last night in cold temperatures that dipped below negative 20 degrees Celsius. This morning with toe warmers. My boots are just covered, ouch, <laughs> covered in ice. We're gonna try these things out. It's not that they're wet inside, they're just freezing cold, literally a block of ice. So apparently these things do the trick. The little heat packs that stick on your socks. Whew. A little tight in the toe box. You know, I love leather boots until mornings like today because last night I go step in the creek to fill up our water bottles. Now the leather doesn't have time to dry, so it's just frozen. Big chunk of ice. It's game time. Come kill us a big old deer. We don't even know what kind yet. We go up, meal deer. We stay down, white tail. Either way, a buck is dying today. My plan this morning is to hike up into the high country where I scouted yesterday in hopes of finding a mature mule deer buck. Now typically at this time of year, the mule deer in this area are found in the upper portion of these mountains, about a thousand feet higher in elevation than our campsite. As we got out of the tent and glassed the basin before heading up into the high country, we picked up a couple white-tailed does. Complete game plan change, as usual. Uh, we saw that there's a couple deer here, so we're gonna get Tom a deer this morning. So I'm gonna take them down and we're gonna go get after these uh, these two does here and 
get them one of the dose real quick. Then we'll spend the rest of the day doing our own thing. But it's a beautiful morning. No wind. We should be able to make it happen. Now Tom is here for me, not antlers. And I wanted to help him get his first big game animal. So I abandoned my plan of going up for mule deer and we set our sights on these two does. We decided we would leave Cheese and Brady on the ridge to man the cameras. But before making the hike down, we cooked up some basic hand signals. Okay, Cheese. All right, what's the hand signals? Um, Huntsville go. Yeah. Um, deer going to the right and going to the hill. Okay. And hunts over. Hunts over, you suck. The plan for this stalk was simple. Hike roughly one kilometer down the ridge, following a small coulee, bringing us about 200 yards downwind of the does. Since we seen them make the same route the previous morning, we figured this would be a slam dunk. A deer out of sight now. Probably about 50 yards away from the ledge. So we're just gonna get on to that edge and uh, try to figure out where they're at. When we hit the area we thought they would be, we spotted the deer about 300 yards out. Tom is only comfortable shooting up to 200 yards, so I'd like to get him well within his comfort zone on this stock. That big pine tree is 250 yards. We're gonna have to get closer. Because we're behind that pine tree. And that's 250, so they're 300 plus. We quickly made a new plan to head them off by route of a thick poplar stand. As we were coming into the clearing, we broke the silence of a cold, quiet morning with the sound of a snapping twig underfoot. Now being within 150 yards, the deer heard us, and we were met with the classic sight most whitetail hunters dread, a big white tail and rump bouncing away graciously, something we like to call a flag, as it resembles a white flag waving goodbye in the distance. As we were heading back toward the ridge, I was trying to make hand signals with Cheese, as we had planned to do earlier. I'm trying to get Cheese to come down here so we can climb this mountain. He's putting his jacket on and taking it back off. But like a duck and a dog trying to talk to one another, our signals were lost in translation. Once we got the band back together, Cheese and I decided to head up the mountain in hopes of finding some mule deer bucks. It was a short hike to the top of the ridge, only about an hour and a half of hiking up a winding horse trail, and we found ourselves on the windswept openings I'd been dreaming about exploring all week. First sign of deer tracks, we got a mule eat doe walking over top of our tracks from last night, so it's good. We're in the mule deer country. Just gotta start actually seeing some. As we crested one of the first ridges, I seen some white butts, and they were slowly feeding away from us. Naturally, I was thinking we just found the muleys we were after, but upon closer examination, they turned out to be a small herd of bighorns, comprised of a couple of ewes and a lamb. Just stumbled. It's funny how much a sheep butt and a mule deer butt can look alike at a distance when you only catch a small piece of their white rump through long grass. It's at times like this I'm thankful for the words of wisdom shared with me from longtime hunting veterans in my hunter safety course as a kid. The phrase, be sure of your target and beyond before taking aim has always stuck with me and kept me from making rash decisions and rush shots in the name of safety for as long as I've had the privilege of holding a rifle. As we stood there watching these sheep with the beautiful mountain backdrop, they fed to within 40 yards of us. So I pulled out my archery air bow and practiced my form a few times. We then proceeded to back out of there as to not spook the sheep and we headed into the next bowl, following a well-packed deer trail through a thick stand of timber. So the nice burn I saw a little while ago is uh, pretty far. There's a full canyon in the way down, back up that mountainside, and that old base is all burned up. But 
This area is really nice actually. There's a whole bunch of sheep tracks all over the hill back there. There's elk sign all here. There's meal deer sign coming up over this hill here. So this south face is all pretty much open grass. And the north face on the back side here is pretty thick timber. So right now I would, I would venture to guess most of those deer are back in there bedded up. But later on this evening or early in the morning, we'll be out here feeding on these grassy slopes. As the clearing slightly opened up, we spotted two bull elk through a stand of aspen, sunning themselves on the south facing slope. Okay. We got two bull elk, about 100, 130 yards out. We're just gonna get real low here. Try and close this gap a bit. What a spot. Quickly goes from mule here on the bull elk on. I gotta get close enough so I can see if they're legal bulls. screwing around last day down to the last 12 and we're gonna kill ourselves a nice buck this morning unfortunately it's gonna be a white tail it's not gonna be a muley sure yeah we just haven't been seeing enough muley sign for me to like risk going into that muley area in comparison to the white tails where there's a lot of nice white tail buck sign in a couple spots so so what's the plan right now to we're gonna climb back up to the summit. <laughs> That's uh, about 20 after seven. We're, we've been hiking for about 20 minutes now. And uh, it's going real nice this morning. It's cold, it's quiet, it's snowing a little bit here. So it's gonna give us a good perspective on fresh sets of tracks in the area. It's a really good morning. As long as we keep hustling, we're gonna be able to get up there just before first light. So, and we got really good odds of success today. Being our last day up here, we invited Brady to join us on this trip up the mountain and be the trigger man if we were fortunate enough to come across a worthy buck. Be a nice bull in a few years. Not anymore. What's that? Not anymore. Oh, this is, he just lost this. Oh, he just oh, lost yeah. that? Yeah, they lose them every winter. Oh, the hell? I thought it was like dead. No, uh, they the... lose these every winter, so this is just called a shed. What? Yeah. Just like white tails, they lose them every year. Same thing. So you're saying like the, the, the one that we saw today? Yeah. I mean yesterday? Yeah. They're going to lose that? Yeah. Those will be out here on the mountain. That's why I was saying earlier. So I'm surprised we haven't found any sheds because this is the elk wintering grounds. So they're here during the winter time. They lose their antlers here in the winter time. Following some deer trails through here and then come up to this nice spring. 
just loaded from all angles. Traffic coming in here. If we weren't so low on time, I'd say this is probably a good place to sit. Deer, 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 I just sent a shot at him. I think he went down. Um, I think we were kind of a little bit rushed. Pretty close quarters here, so I only seen some center mass, so I wanted to make sure. I've seen some crazy antlers. I wanted to make sure we caught her down. Um, I think I rushed it a little bit just because we were trying to get it on camera. I thought Mitch said, like, do you have it? I thought that was him saying, pull the trigger. Um, so we'll see. I don't know how much of it we got on camera, but hopefully we got a big buck down over there. and. Uh, so me in the freezer. The deer wasn't more than 60 yards out, standing broadside when Brady pulled the trigger. But as we hiked up, all we could find was hair and no blood. Definitely smacked him, man. Definitely smacked. Usually sometimes when you hit the hair, it means you hit it a little high or a little low. Just enough to get some hair off. After about 20 minutes of tracking and backtracking through a pile of deer tracks, I finally got on the right set and located the buck not 40 yards from where Brady hit him. Got him. <laughs> I was a little worried when uh, I just seen all that fur. I wasn't sure if maybe I hit it a little high or a little low, but clearly it only went about 40 yards from where I shot it. So it's a good clean kill. Nice little, uh, Nice little eight pointer. Aren't you stoked now that you hiked up the mountain this morning? I'm stoked I hiked up the mountains. I'll tell you, when I was uh, dragging my ass up it this morning, I wasn't uh, wasn't happy about it, but I dragged my ass all the way up here, and whew, yeah, I would say it's worth every uh, every bit of pain for this little bit of gain. <laughs> now, as any seasoned backcountry hunter will tell you, once the animal hits the ground, that's where the real work begins. We made quick work of this buck and got him broken down and in a game bags within about 30 minutes, which left us plenty of time to reap the rewards of our harvest and whip up some tenderloins over the fire. I figured I would try and be clever on this one and try cooking the meat in a way I had never attempted before. What we're gonna do is take that rib cage of the deer. We're gonna build this, put the fire right inside that rib cage. And then we're gonna cook tenderloins right on top of that rib cage, using it like kind of like a barbecue grill. <laughs> We're gonna have a feast, like kings. As great of an idea as I thought this would be, I would caution anyone from trying it, because to be honest, this was one of the worst tasting tenderloins I have ever made. <laughs> it's actually hard to stomach. <laughs> the taste of burning fat, charred bone, and some intestinal juices from a less than desirable shot placement all blended together in a swirl of nasty smoke and turned this typically choice piece of meat into something very unpleasant to eat and that only the hardiest of men, like Cheese, the man behind the lens, would consider to be palatable. This hunt for me was a little different. Most hunts I go out, all for me, go get my animal. But in this trip, Tom's never got a deer. Brady really wanted to get a white tail. So it kind of turned into uh, going out with the boys. And you know what? It's a lot of fun doing it this way too. So not always gonna having to be the trigger man, you know? But still get to be there, experience everything. It's a world of, world of fun. No complaints from me. You, Brady? Complaints at all, man. I just like showing up. Shooting a deer is bonus for me. As goes with most of my outings in the mountains, it's a constant learning experience that will forever continue to grow my knowledge base and make me a better backcountry hunter, cook, and provider for my family and friends. As we packed up camp, we swapped stories of our adventures and close calls this week. And it's for times like these 
that I'm thankful to live this type of lifestyle and make these memories that will last a lifetime with men I consider to be my brothers. And as we grow old and gray, these will be the days we look back on as some of our fondest memories. All right, everybody, thanks a lot for watching this two-part late season mule deer hunt. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we did being out here this week. Even though we didn't see any mule deer whatsoever because we didn't really get back into the zone where all the muleys were. We had a lot of fun chasing whitetails and elk and I hope you guys enjoyed it too. If you guys have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them down in the comment section. Also share the video or hit me with a like. Let me know what, uh, what you think about it. So that's it for this week. Be sure to check us out next week when Lynn and I head down to Southern Alberta. We're doing a whole week long backpack horseback essentially hunt for elk. Elk and whitetail, so it should be a lot of fun and I look forward to seeing you guys there. Next time on Alpine Carnivore.